are nothing like a beautiful sunrise. I'd have loved to do some fishing, but I don't have a fishing pole yet, so let's jump to work. Welcome back gamers, this is Shepard, and we are once again on the island for another exciting episode of the Quick Start Guide. I might have to change the Quick Start Guide name, actually, or the title, because we are going into detail, this is no longer just a Quick Start Guide. But anyways, um, unfortunately some sad news, we lost Rufus due to a manta ray attack recently, so the raptor we tamed in the previous episode is no longer with us. Rest is whole. Anyways, but to tame more raptors in the future, we are going to be needing berries, narco berries, and then of course medja berries for all the herbivores that we'll be taming. So what I'm going to be doing right now is I'm going to show you guys how to make a basic farm for the two most commonly used berries. Alright, so I went ahead and gathered some resources for everything we're going to need. We are going to build two of these little crops. One for medja berries, one for narco berries, and then we are also going to make a couple of water skins. Now, we're not going to need nine of them. Four should do. I have a couple of my inventory already, so I'm just going to make two more. And then I'm going to show you guys how to make a basic farm setup for some berries. I also, luckily I stumbled upon two narco berry seeds and one major berry seed which we are going to be using so okay we already have the crop plots in there and we are going to add the water skins and shove them in there right so let's start by placing them let me just get this level up thing out of the way I'm gonna add that to carry weight as I said at the beginning of my series right okay so, for the purpose of expanding your farm later on, you can place your crop plots as close as possible to water, to a water source. Later on, when you get irrigation pipes, you're just going to put an intake pipe from the water and take it all the way to your farm. Also, of course, later on you're going to build a greenhouse, which means you're going to have to elevate your pipes, but we'll get to those details later. Right, so there we have it. We have two little crop plots down there, and we are going to access their inventory. By the way, you can also access the inventory a little faster by pressing F on your keyboard. That'll take you directly to it. I forgot to mention that earlier. Right, so we're going to start with the narco berries. We're going to put one of them in there. And then we are going to put in a water skin or two. Let me see if I, have, I should have another one here with some water. Right, and then you can also, you'll notice when you look at it, the details it gives you is the small crop lot 3 out of 10 slots have been used there is currently no water in it, it is not irrigated, there is no irrigation system it is not fertilized, it is seeded and there is no greenhouse effect obviously right so at the top there you'll see we have the option of depositing medium animal feces that would be courtesy of Paris wherever he is, oh there he is, he's on the other side of the house so we picked up his poop, we are going to deposit that, now we have 7,500 fertilizer in there. Okay, so now, to get water in this thing, without an irrigation system, you will be putting in your water skins and then you will consume them as you would force feed a dinosaur narco berries. So then, you just use this one and you use that one. You'll see the narco berry seed disappeared because, voila, there is a little plant coming up already so this goes rather quickly alright now you're gonna have to manually fill this thing up without the convenience of an irrigation system you're gonna have to constantly come check your water so we filled up a few more water skins let's put them in there and we use or consume them while they are in the inventory and that should take us up to, there we go, 199 water. Alright, so in here we have our narco berries. And then we're going to be doing the exact same thing over here with measure berries. Alright, so let's just fill up the water skins again. And then put that in over there. Alright, now 
it has a seed, it has water, but it does not have fertilizer. So it's not going to sprout yet. You're going to need to get a fertilizer. Later on you can put down, uh, you can actually build compost bins, which you deposit some dinosaur poop and thatch. And the ratio there is 50 thatch to 3 dinosaur poops of any size. So it can be large, medium, small, whatever. And then over a pretty long period of time it will make fertilizer for you. Then you can deposit fertilizer. Now one bag of fertilizer, if I remember correctly, is close to about 50,000 fertilizer. So one bag of fertilizer goes a very long way. But for now, you're going to have to carry around poop. Alright, so let's see if we're lucky enough. Let's see if uh, this guy made us another deposit. There is also a force poop button. It should be around here somewhere. I know it is. It is here somewhere. Hmm. It was here somewhere. You can customize it. I just can't remember what mine was. Where is it? It's something with the numpad. Somewhere at the numpad. I can't see it. I think by default it should be... It should be one of the numpad ones. Plus or minus? Let's get on him and see what happens. Ah! I think I found it. Not ready to defecate yet. Okay, so it would be on your numpad. Plus, but that doesn't want to work right now. I don't know why. Let's see if we can force feed him. Come on, eat magic berries. I need you to poop. Let's level him up. Maybe he'll feel a little less constipated when he's another level higher. Still not. Damn it. Well, that's sad. Running around in search of poop. Unbelievable. Would be nice if we can get one of these guys to do it for us. Excuse me, sir, would you mind making a deposit toward my farm? I guess not. Come on, Paris, you're letting me down. Yes! Took a while. Oh, hey, the Triceratops made a... Ah, uh, why, thank you, sir. Such a kind donation. move forward. Gee, thanks. Alright, there we go. We are sorted. With more dino poop. Okay, so... There we go. We can add this. Uh, let me press backspace, take away the HUD. You'll see that there is currently nothing. And then as soon as we deposit it, then it should be sprouting up. There we go. Alright, so we have major berries in one, and Norco berries in the other. Alright, now this unfortunately takes a while. The whole farming business. The greenhouse effect, if I remember correctly, can go up to a maximum of 300%. Then your production is a whole lot faster. This is going to take a while, so... While you wait... Expand your house, gather resources, do whatever you like. If you get to the point, if you are on the same level as I am, and you don't feel like doing the farming thing yet, you can save it up for later. Um, you can, with a parasaur, you can actually harvest a lot of berries with it. If you take a look at my inventory here, uh, just by quickly running around in search of 
Medjoberry and Narcoberry seeds. I actually picked up quite a bunch of Medjoberries, sorry, and Narcoberries. So if you have a Parasaur, then you can actually farm this stuff or, or gather this with a Parasaur rather easily. But later on, especially when you know you start growing a tribe, playing along with friends, and so on, you're not really gonna have time to or not really going to be in the mood anymore to manually go look for this kind of resources. So then a farm comes in really handy. But one manning it at the beginning, you can gather this stuff manually. Parasaur is perfect for gathering berries and if you're lucky enough now and then you get a couple of seeds as well. So you can actually see it's, it's rather useful for gathering berries. You get a bunch of the other berries as well. But the most important ones at this point is the Medjo berries and the Narco berries. The Parasaur is actually really good at gathering its own berries. So you'll see... Ooh, sorry, I don't want to bother this guy. So the Parasaur is really good at gathering Medjo berries and most of your herbivores can be tamed with Medjo berries quite easily up until the point where you start farming um, carrots and potatoes and all that stuff, which is in-game called rock carrots and sever roots, if I remember correctly. So, yeah, Parasaur, really good thing to start with for berry collection and so on. But, there we go. A nice bunch of berries collected and then very important keep your berry seeds for later you can of course expand this put down as many crop plots as you want but keep in mind you are gonna have to keep an eye on your irrigation on your water so you don't want to forget about that. Um, your first irrigation pipes, if I memory serves correctly, your first irrigation pipes come in at level 17. There you go. That would be an intake pipe, and I know there's a tap in here somewhere. There's even a water reservoir. So if you play on the island and you decide to build a little bit more inland, where you're not close to a water source, you can build a water reservoir and then with these lovely rainstorms that you have on the island you can gather, wa gather water from there and then your irrigation pipes can actually go from your reservoir to your crop plots so you don't have to be next to a river or the ocean in this case so yeah, that is the basic farming you can put down as many of these as you want. Oh, and another thing, which is actually great now that it's raining, obviously your crop plots will fill with water automatically. Then you don't have to worry about carrying water up and down. Um, this kind of farming is a little bit more difficult on other maps like Scorched Earth, where it does not really rain. Um, me and a couple of friends, we have a huge base on Scorched Earth. It is our pride and joy at this point. And it does not really rain there. We've been playing for roughly a couple of months, month, maybe two months now. Um, going on to three maybe. And I think we've seen it rain once, aside from sandstorms and heat waves and electric storms and so on. So the rain on the island makes it really nice. You don't have to be close to water source, it rains enough, so you put down enough water reservoirs and there will be enough irrigation for a rather huge farm. So, but this is the basics. Hope this helps. It is going to take a while before you can actually start harvesting from this. But, in the end, it'll pay off. So, expand it. Pack the whole beach full of these things if you want to. Or, if you're not much of a farmer, tame a parasaur, grab it and go harvest the berries you want. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, I hope it helped. It might, but might not be major at this point, but I will later on show you guys how to build a proper greenhouse farm, which 
will yield so much harvest you won't have enough storage space for it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please hit the like button, share, comment if you wish, and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it already. Thanks again for watching, guys. Cheers.